mean, who don't want to break in a new venue? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Yeah. You can say five years, six years, seven years from now, you know, I was at, you know, T-Mobile uh, Arena. Yeah. And, and, and I was there as a champion and I broke it in. I mean, that's history. Mm -hmm. That's history because I can mention a lot of times that I realized or I was told that I was fighting or doing something that was history. You can't erase history. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, every, I think every fighter in every era had a place where they called their home. I mean, Ray Robinson had Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Why not Canelo have Team Mobile? That's awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. I appreciate Thank you. it. Tonight, I want to get your reaction. Next time, don't be a little shy when you ask questions. <laughs> I'm tired. You can beat me tonight. No I'm, I'm, I really want to go to bed. I appreciate There's, it, brother. I'm on East Coast time. <laughs> your reaction, of course, to the uh, knockout that happened. Oscar, you're going to throw a one-two. And within a half a second, we was running in the state. We was running on, in the rain. Mm -hmm. um, when Canelo got warmed up and he really uh, um, had to find the timing, as, had to get the timing together, to try to go ahead and trap Amir Khan. But Amir Khan has a great amateur record, as Oscar mentioned. And he, was, he could be kind of tricky and kind of loose. But, you know, when that right hand finally started touching Khan before the knockout, Canelo was missing it by whiskers, mm -hmm. literally. Whether it was at the end of the round when the bell rung and, you know, early in the round, he was just missing the mark. But I think as the round went on and got the sixth round of knockout, I think the fourth, fifth, you could see him get, uh, Canelo getting closer. And he's touching him with the jab, with the body soft, not hard, so he can throw the big left hand or the big right hand. And he eventually done that. And when he did that, it was, that was, it, it was, no, their knockouts, their stoppage. But every fighter that know about making statements I want a knockout. They want a knockout where he hit a guy and he don't get up. Those knockouts rarely happens. It's either the referee do a mercy call, mm -hmm. you know, grab him, hug him, it's over, right? Or the referee throws a towel in. We've seen one fight today when, when, where not the referee, the, the cornerman threw yeah. a towel in. But when one or two punch, knock a guy out, and they just say, look, take the mouthpiece out, everybody jump in the ring, don't even count. That's scary. Now you're talking about somebody's life. That's the difference between getting KO'd, TKO'd, stoppage about any other um, um, force outside the ring. But when a guy get hit and he goes down and it's over, that's some serious stuff. That's not like, that's something you don't see every day in every boxing. Which makes me ask, were you worried about Amir when that happened? Of course, I mean, because the way he the way Amir Khan went down, the way he got hit, first of all, and the way he went down. His head bounced. His head, you know, when you get knocked out like that, you get hit twice. You get hit by your opponent, and when you fall and you hit your head on a canvas, mm -hmm. the back of your head hits that canvas, it bounces up. And, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I think your brain is in the back of your head, not the front. Bernard, can you so, demonstrate so, how hard the so, canvas is? No, like, can you stop cutting me off, sir? I, we can we can get a little show. <laughs> I like you. I like you. I'm not gonna mess with you. But but when you fall and hit your head from the back where the brain is at, oh, I was concerned about him. What'd you make of the fight up into the point of the stoppage? Did you? Feel I believe that? he was winning close to a spy hair. I mean, Amir. Yeah, yeah, on points because he look. He, he, it's no secret Amir Khan is one of the superb boxers in that division, right? Yes. Do we got other? Negatives that works against him, yes. A, his chin, right? Mm -hmm. You might not think this is true, but B, his heart, because Amir Khan got so much heart that we love. And my Tori Gatti, right? Mm -hmm. Where you got too much heart for your own good, right? So when you get caught up into a shootout, or as we say in our sport, a punch out, you're not going to get the best end of that because mm -hmm. your chin can't hold up. So that's where he, that is, American got sucked into that type of uh, fight with Canelo as the fight wore on. As he got loose, low, slowed up a little bit for some body shots, Canelo found his mark, and it was, it was 
you know, it was one of those knockouts that people are going to be talking about, I believe. And this not, I don't have to hype out something that we can see. Mr. Burner, I gotta ask you, a lot of people that's, expected that's a, a lot of people expected this knockout, but was it impressive? Was this what you expected? I don't think people expected the knockout to be this way. I think they expected Canelo to win. Um, but I think that people expect that Amir Khan was gonna at least box him and take it into a rounds where maybe Canelo was slow up or the big punch didn't land. One thing about big punches they always got a punch a chance, right? Mm -hmm. But the Matador didn't play the Matador tonight. The Matador didn't use the ball like he's supposed to. And you know, the ball wins sometimes too. <laughs> yeah. So the Matador uh, got tangled and he paid a big price. That's the risk you take. But listen, one thing I can say, even though you didn't ask this, you gotta give American a lot of credit. He didn't have to fight this fight. We got guys in weight divisions, whether they came up or didn't come up, they don't want to fight. The light heavyweight championship fight. How bad do you want to see this Donna Stevenson fight Sergey Kovalev? So when you look at guys like Amir Khan and you look at throwback guys like myself who went up two weight classes to fight at Tano Tarver, you got to understand this. That is, that is to me, you know, we got a thing called in the streets of Philadelphia called gangster. That's not being negative. It's just saying you're doing things that people are saying, wow, why he do that? I wouldn't have done it. Well, you dare to be great, that's how you do. Sometimes you're not the A side. You know, sometimes you're not the A side. Sometimes you're not even the damn B side. But if you get there and you take those risks and you consider biting more off more off you can chew, and then you surprise the critics and the media and you win, my God, it's vicious, it's over. What did you make of, uh, Abel Sanchez said, he was announced as the middleweight champion of the world, so no 155, it has to be 160. What do you make of that? Yeah, I, look, Abel Sanchez, just better answer the phone tomorrow. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for that.